Um, should I take over? I have a couple of items here in the agenda. Yeah, sure. Um, go first and I'll, I'll catch up. Yeah, I just added here. Um, sorry about that. Let me zoom in. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, first of all, I just wanted to give you an update on my availability and um, on my interim position as product design manager. So I learned this week that we um, are still not hiring someone this month. So there was a, a timeline we were expecting to have a new product design manager um, by February. So I'm, but I'm going to continue until, well, hopefully end of this month or through March um, as we are looking for um, a design manager to uh, backfill the position that's going to be open once Mike Long joins the CICD team as a product design manager. So we'll just an update on that and that I'm still split, so not 100% focused on right. um, passing a runner. Um, any concerns on that before we go into the, um, the priorities and what's next? Well, I think we'll, we'll flash on when we talk about the, pro like, you know, the priorities and then some of the updates. So then we can kind of see if, if you know, kind of where things land in terms of scheduling and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, and then I open here, um, I line this, I'm looking at the workflow design verify testing runner. Um, so maybe I'll share my screen just so you know also where I'm looking at. Yeah, okay, there you awesome. Go. Oops, here. Um, so I think this is the one. Yeah. Yes, we still have this one uh, that is in my, uh, pipeline and I didn't look at the last update. I was supposed to do this last week and then I was out. Um, but I saw that there was a discussion here from technical writers on what the the copy should look like. Mm -hmm. And I don't think uh, right now it changes a lot in the scope. I, so That's I just want to align with you. Um, if I can wrap this one up. And then I think so. Excited. And then the last time we were chatting about this one, I think it was just before um, you you went out. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't sure if you had a chance to circle back um, with Pedro. I know he's out for a week, so no, not on this item. That's true. So um, I'm gonna add here. Oops. So let me add a note here. So. Yeah. In any case, um, I don't think Pedro is out, but he has a uh, limited availability at this point. I think he's working 50% or something like that. Um, so oh, is he? I thought he was taking a holiday this week. Pedro, the designer, you mean, right? No, Pedro, um, the um, developer who's working on the back end changes. Ah, Sorry. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. No, Sorry. <laughs> Because yeah, we had that conversation about just um, just double checking. Now that we kind of know what the UI is going to look like for the top for the switch, right? Just syncing back up now in terms of all the latest changes that have happened in the back end with Pedro, the feature flag, the logic, just to make sure that we we're kind of all aligned before we even you know move forward with actually implementing it. Then that changed my whole plan because I was thinking that we were talking about <laughs> just the design with Pedro, oh. and I was like, no, we can discuss that later. But okay, yeah. it's Pedro. Okay. Thank you so much for pronouncing that for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to even add his uh, profile here. Okay. Cool. I'll do that. I, on Friday, I'm looking at a testing runner. So I have this uh, one and also another issue from testing in my backlog. So <laughs> I'll talk to the backend Pedro. Awesome. Um, yeah, do you want to look into the other items to see if the what we can move above the cut line from my epic list? Well, I'll, I'll just ask a quick question. So mm. just looking at your current epic plan, um, and the cut line just basically means, hey, you're pretty, is that that cut line for like the 39 milestone or is that the cut line for your capacity for this week? Can yeah, it's so the things that I'm currently doing and um, they are prioritized. So I think there's yeah, three issues from testing um, it's pretty much one thing, but uh, James has it uh, broke down into three issues. So these are things that I'm currently doing. So once we move or we 
decide the, um, what the design is going to look like or when it's ready for planning breakdown, it moves out um, of my of the, of yeah. this. Okay. So right, below cool. the cut line is like backlog. The backlog stuff that you're actively working on at the moment. No, so I'll start working once it goes above the cut line. That's why I'm asking us to have um, this conversation so that we can review it. Um, because as you can see, um, I, it takes like, like what, one, two weeks for me to actively work on these issues. So yeah, it's a bit unrealistic to have uh, <clears throat> like, like now I have five four or five items because I'm not going to move forward with them. That's why I say right. once gotcha. uh, so yeah. Oh, so basically you're um, so moving above the cut line basically means that the product manager is saying, hey, this thing is important. This thing should be prioritized to work on. Okay, cool. So initially what I was doing, I saw the cut line. I was just like, okay, let me just put everything below the cut line because I was thinking the cut line was like you signaling. This is kind of like my capacity for 3.9. Mm -hmm. And other things are going to have to wait to get into the queue. But okay, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and that's also another thing I, I discussed with, um, with James is that these items, don't, they don't need to be assigned to a specific milestone. So for example, if we had here something that is a uh, need to start looking to research and then we have a research item that I need to, I don't know, help you out with um, the a draft for the questions or anything, it goes here. Mm -hmm. So now everything is assigned 13.9, but you can just add something or we can be working on something that still needs to be scheduled. Gotcha. But yes, in uh, summarizing, okay. these are the things that I'm doing now. Okay. Um, um, but we thought, since we're talking about the, the priorities, um, before we jump ahead to the agenda topic on, on Vitica, maybe mm -hmm. let's talk about the item on my bullet point, which is like the enterprise management stuff, because I think it, it aligns better with our discussion around the prioritization list in mm -hmm. terms of the cut line. Um, so let me share my screen really fast and um, kind of catch you up in terms of some of the things I've been doing. And we can hit share. Hopefully, is my screen showing up okay? I think the agenda doc is on the screen, right? Yeah. Let me, let me, let me just put all this other stuff out of the way so we can just focus on this. All right, cool. So, is it, by the way, is it big enough to see? I always ask that question. Sure. Yeah, you can zoom okay. in a little bit. All right. So, I'm just going to kind of do a quick five minute or less than five minute kind of overview to kind of give you um, sort of a synchronous kind of update in terms of like all of this content that's in here and hopefully kind of show how that flows into some of the initial design tasks we've talked about. So, um, as every, for anyone who's looking in the video who, not, who hasn't been caught up in the conversations, this particular epic is specifically around the revamp of the management UI for the runner. And it's under this broad category of theme of enterprise management, and it ties into this broader theme of enterprise management security and UX, right? So it's the initial placeholder hold epic for, okay, how are we going to rework the the UI, the GitLab UI to manage runners better, especially for the, for administrators. So, um, hi, and what I've done since we last chatted is um, clean up the problem statement a little bit, um, make some more refinements to the problem statement. Um, so there's a problem statement section, which is pretty straightforward. Um, there's a business outcomes heading, which is pretty straightforward. Um, this section here is just kind of sort of a reference architecture section. It just basically describing for folks that I mean, I'd be very familiar with um, the terms enterprise or scale, just an example of what we mean when we talk about enterprise and scale. And then just a few examples of customers, existing GitLab customers, and kind of the scale of their environment. So, if, so folks kind of trying to get up to speed in terms of what we're talking about, this is kind of what that section is. Um, and then so high end, what I've done since the last time we've met, um, I went ahead and created this sort of like jobs to be done, map to requirements table. And um, hopefully this is, Again, a work in progress, but hopefully a way to simplify um, the aggregation of all of the various requirements, right? Either from customer conversations and on calls or, you know, feedback and actual issues or, or what have you. Um, so this is kind of just uh, for uh, folks trying to get their heads around this. This is like, hey, start here. Try to start reading through this from a jobs to be done point of view. Um, so there's a column for jobs to be done. And where appropriate, I actually have a requirements column as well. 
So, um, Hyanna, so what I did was, remember the last time I spoke to you, I said, hey, let's pause on the runner registration so it can work, right? And so after looking at all the, and I, and I said, because I wasn't quite sure we wanted to do that tactically versus having to think about how it fits within the broader, you know, st strategic plan of reworking the, the admin UI. So after going through it, I was like, okay, you know, this, this is a very important job to be done. It's probably the first one, which is respond to security incidents. Um, you need to find the reg registration token. So I started thinking about how this fits into everything as a trade -in. So I want to just kind of call it that I put this as the first job to be done. So this is the job to be done table. Um, this diagram here was just a, a rough diagram in terms of us thinking about how we implement this and then a features table. Um, I'm just going to kind of scroll all past all this stuff. So Hayana, in terms of the iteration plan, so here's what I'm proposing right now in terms of the iteration plan. And um, once you kind of like wrap your head around this, you can certainly suggest a different approach, but this is kind of what I was thinking initially. So for the iteration plan, knowing that we, the, the very, one of the sort of immediate action, sort of immediate requirements that we have to solve for is, is how, can, how can I quickly find a registration token feature? I didn't want us to necessarily solve for that, right, independently of knowing that we have to come back and rework the admin UI, right? So my, my proposal is to create a new MVC design for the admin runners view table that also addresses the requirement to search for the registration token. So what I could add here was a high level low fidelity markup um, just to at least start the conversation, right? And, and Hyena, by the way, you very, are you very familiar with what the current enterprise, what the current view looks like in the, in the admin screen? I can't hear you, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I know how, how it looks like. Okay, cool. So, right, so for anybody else, hopefully. Um, right. So this is just a, a suggestion, right? And the idea being, we need to, and the idea being this kind of the strategic vision is, um, we need to think about how to represent all of this information in the most elegant way possible because we have a lot of features to add in the future. So the first proposal is let's rework to start that table. And so how you know what it is, was just a rough order markup. Um, and if you notice, I added the registration token um, column here in the markup, um, which is the MVC for this change. Now, the other thing I added in this markup, which we can, we'll get to later on is association. And this is potentially not an MVC feature, right? But it's a feature lower down all this in terms of, you know, evolving that journey of, I, can I find my runner? Can I understand who owns the runners and association? So anyway, just as we are working through some of these things, you know, maybe I went a little bit too far ahead by including association in this markup, but I just wanted to at least start that conversation and thought process. And then the other thought process I wanted to start thinking about, which I haven't articulated yet in, 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 in the document, is this like this columns concept. I don't know if we have this in GitLab in terms of our UI framework or components. And I don't know if this is the right way to go. Um, so open to discussion as we get down the path, right? In other sort of other new features. But the idea being, let me step back. Like this admin, this admin view right now, uh, except every column in here, except for association right, this is going to be available for any tier of GitLab, right? So any tier of GitLab, they open up this new admin, open the current admin view, that's what they get today. They open up the new reworked admin view, that's what they're going to get, any tier of GitLab. However, when we start adding new features like, hey, making it very super easy to see the group association, we need to make a decision. And right now I'm leaning towards that kind of additional column is not going to be available in like in your free tier, um, so in your lower end tiers. It's probably going to be maybe premium, maybe all the way up to ultimate. Right now, obviously, we need leadership to come in and, and give us guidance on that, right? And if if that's the path we want to go to, which is like I'm thinking right now, that's potentially the path we want to go to. Do we have an ability in GitLab to turn on and off columns based on like you know the tier that the user is in, right, or the, or the customer is in? So that's kind of where that column concept came in. Anyway, so. I'm uh, closing this off really fast. Um, so where was I? So I propose the new design, and then this ties in back to um, to this issue on your board. So I'm proposing that this is the first issue to work on in terms of the next design task for the runner. It's just the MVC redesign of the admin table. However, and where it kind of gets tricky for you is. 
um, thinking about, that's just the basic table stakes is this table, but thinking about, hey, if I drop this new table view in there, later on, I, we know that we have to add the details, which is the second iteration here, right? And is it the right approach to add details like in this rough low fidelity mockup, which kind of for the most part just copies what we're doing today, but gives it a different pit, kind of spin and polish. Do we want to continue with this kind of approach where, you know, you start with the, the summary table, then you click on the runner and you go into the detail table. Do we want to go with that paradigm or do we want to go with a different paradigm, knowing that once you see the detail of the runner in the future, and especially the customers in Ultimate, you're then going to start probably exposing other features or capabilities, whether it's other columns, whether it's integrated metrics, right? So um, even though we might design the MVC like this, we have to think about, is that the right approach for design? So let me pause there. So I, I just added those two for now. Um, and what I've been doing is if you look at the iteration plan table, actually I'm going to my pause, it's basically, you can just walk through each row, like create a new MVC design for the, the, some, the table. <laughs> Create new MSC design for the detail, right? Um, um, there is this one with um, recent job serve by, um, by, um, by runner, then validating the design with customers, then implementing the design. So I'm adding all those tasks in, in the sort of a kind of like a you know, priority order in this column. And then the other task I have to add is things like create new MSC design for integrating metrics or create new MSC design. So anyway, let me pause there and um, and stop talking and give you a chance to ask a bunch of questions. <laughs> hey, you anymore? Sorry. I'm not used to having this in a new microphone. <laughs> I've thought about it. Um, are these uh, jobs to be done that you added here also reflected on the um, on the handbook or, or just like documented somewhere else? Um, or is it, um, as you said, you on the fly, you're adding them to, to the issue, to the epic description? So these jobs to be done aren't in the handbook, right? Mm -hmm. These jobs to be done are, 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 were created because right now the customers are not expressing the requirements and jobs to be done, right? If you look at all of the, the customer conversations we've had or customer comments in, um, in the issues, the customers have very specific requirements, right? Which is, mm -hmm. let's, let's look at the runner registration token one for a second. The requirement is provide the requirement as written right now in the actual issue that the customer opened was I need to find, I need to be able to search as an admin in, a, in the GitLab instance, I need to be able to quickly search and find a registration token. Right? That's the requirement the customers very explicitly ask for. But since we're using a job to be done paradigm here at GitLab, I felt it was important to kind of step back and create a jobs to be done frame. So that again, giving us the latitude, which is the whole purpose of jobs to be done, to think differently about the solution. So to answer your question, no, it's not something that's documented in the handbook. It's a, a, it's a good attempt to represent those requirements in a job to be done frame. So as we're going through these designs, we can uplift ourselves and kind of think about if we're doing the right thing in terms of you know solution design and approach and so on. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, um, I linked here. Um, this is also for us, something for us to look into later uh, later on. Um, we actually created, our UX research folks created a, um, some instruction of validating jobs to be done. And I just wanted to know if this, uh, um, the statements that you added to the issue description are documented in the runner jobs to be done handbook page. So I think the answer is no, that they live in the epic description, right? Yeah. And I think we, and that whole question about jobs to be done runners page, I think it's something we need to have a broader discussion on because I'm not sure what if with, if we're saying every single customer requirement becomes a job to be done, do we document in the handbook page? I, I, I'm, I don't know what the values of that, but that's an interesting, an interesting point. Yeah. The, most state groups have their jobs to be done page. I'm going to just add here. Uh, let me see. Release. Um, da, da, da. I can go to the here. Um, so anyways, this is, we can definitely discuss it later on, um, but I see the value uh, for us to um, document this in a handbook so that we can always refer to what is the grade of this job to be done? Have we validated? Yes or not? What's the next step for, you know, how do you want to iterate, for example, like what you're saying um, with the views? So the first request is user just wants to see which token belong to which group, and then we're going to grow this to the, the larger 
uh, enterprise administration. So how do we break that path into um, pretty much what you already did with that table in the epic, the building blocks. Uh, but anyways, that's a side discussion. <laughs> um, and um, I love that you already put the prototypes there. So thanks for the, the proactiveness. No, um, I, I, no, low fidelity mockups. <laughs> doesn't matter, you see it there. <laughs> um, and we probably need to do the, the solution validation side on that. Um, and I think just by you know this uh, introduction and the explanation, I think it will be interesting for us to, um, of course, think about the low hanging fruits and do like what you already uh, mocked up with, uh, with the table and uh, some the content that we can do with the MVC. But I think for us it would be interesting to just do the bigger picture uh, prototype of this is the vision. How can we break it down into the, the, the small deliverables and how we're going to build, you know, the, the, the functionality right. to achieve that high level vision. So um, that's what I was hoping you were going to um, kind of land on in terms of you, did we, did we want to go down incremental path and, you know, right, in terms of design or to your point, just kind of step back and look at the current interactions and say, hey, if we're redesigning all of these things with all these jobs to be done in mind, what, what it would look like? It's a great point. Yeah, because I think especially for, uh, I'm not super familiar with the admin view. And so that's gonna give me also an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the design patterns, but uh, this is gonna spark a, spark a conversation on, I, I can already predict that this is what I'm gonna be discussing with designers. How do we show, um, data on like tabular data on admin mm -hmm. view how is the the flow for going from the overview to the detail view if we go to mm -hmm. that in that path so that's exactly. going to require alignment with other designers that own some of the, the capabilities at the admin uh, area so just so you know yeah. that's what i'm saying we're just going to need to mock this up and put in front exactly. of people not just the customers right. but also the internal on the teams Right, exactly. I completely agree with that. And that's kind of why if you see in the iteration flow, I have, at least for the customer piece, for the small iterative design mockups that I've put in there right now, I've clearly called out once you have actually created a design, we want to at least have a formal customer solution validation with the customers, right? But I think we should also add that role that you're talking about is in creating that overall arching design A, and then B, having that overall arching design be validated internally as well. I think that's, that's a super idea. Julio, and um, in terms of uh, timelines, so tell me, because part of me, not part of me, I'm probably like, oh, I want to work on this. <laughs> this is also a fun challenge. Um, so in terms of, uh, of, of timelines for this, I see that, um, oh, I'm kind of trying to look at the, the jobs Oh, that's a very long issue description. <laughs> um, uh, okay, uh, so sorry, in terms of, uh, of timeline for us uh, for, to start at least um, looking at the, the low hanging fruits, right? Or the, the minor change that we can do. Right. Uh, so that's why I wanted to be coming under your time. So I think, let me just share my screen one more time. Um, if, you know, if you don't mind, let's make sure, because I think for folks that haven't seen all this, do it really fast. Um, in terms of your um, point earlier about the admin view, this is the current admin view, right, folks? Um, when you come in, if you're an instance admin, right, and this is a you know one of the main personas we're we're, we're touting with this kind of enterprise management view. When you come in, this is the current dashboard. Ignoring that for a second, which by the way, as Hyanna knows, this dashboard should be part of that broader conversation. Hyanna that you just talked about, right? Um, the tactical thing we're talking about today is when I click the runners view as an admin, it's this thing, right? Hasn't been touched in a while and search capabilities are limited. I can't find my registration token and so on. Um, so in terms of like, like you know, how quickly and next steps, I think I am if a, um, I don't know if you want to create like a, a specific design task for the broader vision. So it's clearly called out in the design epic. Maybe we should do that. Have that, um, what's the what's term that we use here? Think big section on that, right? As maybe in the, within the next two weeks. And then from there, I make a firm decision. Okay, we've had to think big on the, broad, on the broader topic, right? So we know what the broader vision end goal is. And so let's now finalize the more tactical design for the admin view, you know, two weeks thereafter. 
So that gives us, let's say, by, um, by, mid, by late February, we have a solid design and then we can solution value the design with customers, bring in the front end engineers and start like putting that stick in the sand in terms of when we could potentially release the, iter the first iteration. So that's kind of how I'm thinking about it in terms of, you know, getting it scheduled out. Am I muted? Uh, so now let's talk in terms of milestones. because That's how my brain works. So we are currently in 13, nine. We have 15 days, February. right? Right, exactly. We have 15 days left in the milestone. Yeah, the beginning of the month. Um, we have 13, 10 coming up so on the 18th of February. So would it be fine if we put the start date for 13, 10 for me? Or do you want to have it ready by 1310? 13, 13, yeah. I think we should, um, it depends on what you're talking about. I think we should have the Think Big session on the, the Envision before 1310, and, right? Like, you know, we, you know, sometime between now and, I think the, the map, mm -hmm. I think the admin view, right, should be done by 1310. So whatever we have to do up to, to get that, you know, like the thing big or whatever it is we want to do. All the rituals, we should, yeah. Right. We should try to like say by 1310, we have a MVC design locked and loaded that we can review with customers for the admin view. Mm -hmm. So, so that, and then, then we start the validation. The validation. Right. Exactly. Uh, we aim at 1310. I know we are, um, do we have a, can you go over for one or two minutes or do we need to, yeah. to wrap? Um, I, I, um, and by the way, you, you made a great point about the bigger vision. I just didn't want to get ahead of my skis and like trying to like think about it because I think that's what we had done the first time and it became overwhelming. So that's why I went with mm -hmm. a smaller view this time around. Um, but when I also, when I mentioned, when I mentioned the bigger view, I think it's important to look at the um, the more pressing jobs to be done, right? That we have yeah. identified. So. I also need time to review all this content, but for example, if you say that jobs can be done one to four are pressing for the MVC plus, let's say for the, you know, the, the rest of this quarter, or the, I don't know, um, then that's what the design should reflect, right? We can, of course, just do the think big and then uh, plan the, the happy path mm -hmm. and the, the bigger picture. Um, but I think it's interesting if we, Keep ourselves grounded on what are the jobs that our customers, our users need to perform that are going to be reflected on the MVC and what else can we already incrementally uh, try to solve with the prototype. So that's what I like to do. It's a, a prototype and that validate what we want to solve, but also a little bit extra so that we have a, a bit more of, of confidence on, for example, jobs five, six, seven, something like that. Does that that's a great sense? point. Yeah, and I'm thinking because of what you just said, it might make sense to add a column to the jobs to be done table here um, to say, hey, like JTB001 is probably MVC. Because right now it's, it's not necessarily in priority order, it was just more of, because it was so difficult to kind of like collapse all of these requirements into something that was, it was kind of consumable. It's like, you know, the first one is probably MVC. Um, the uh, the registration token reset was a job to be done number two is probably it's definitely not MVC because that's a whole new mm -hmm. thing, right? Um, number four is probably like iteration MVC plus one or MVC plus two, right? Which is like, okay, can you associate in that in whatever view it is that we come up with, can you associate a runner with a group? Or show the association mm -hmm. sorry of a runner with a group very easily so someone doesn't have to go from the from way for it. But yeah, I think I think that's a great point. I'll add that column in here. And, and so, I also think about your jobs to be done handbook page, how we can use that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to share my screen here because I think uh, it would be a good exercise for us also to start reviewing and validating them uh, using the frameworks, right? And the tools that uh, the design uh, uh, department and research, the research group have uh, developed to validate everything <laughs> that we need to validate. So for reference, this is the testing job to be done page. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much what we should be aiming at, so just translating the high-level job, the statements, 
so that we can link them to the maturity of those features because at some point you're going to have to validate if I don't know runner is uh, lovable. So which jobs we don't we want to validate, right? Uh, which uh, uh, statements and scenarios do we want to put in front of our users? And then we're going to have to use all the design frameworks. Um, so that's are going to translate into the confidence and the validation issue. So soon we're going to have a page like this um, where we can just track everything the same way as everybody else does. Um, because I think this is also going to help us have a one more standardized conversation with um, with other groups and also help Laurie to stay on track of yeah what are the jobs yeah. okay I see no, no I see I see the point I think what I'm getting hung up is definitely this I'll can edit this table that I think there's already one drafted for the runner but if you scroll down just a, a little bit on this one mm -hmm. um, I say just choose one of those jobs to be done I think um, the one thing to me that I'm we need to be flexible on is, for example, like for the random registration reset, the reset registration token, uh, sort of like requirement or pain point, right? Um, do we have to? Do we have to have? Knowing that we already have a long issue from an, in, in the internal customer um, project that the, the technical account manager is managing, where the customer is saying, "Here is the pain. Here is what I need to get mm -hmm. that to solve." Knowing that we already have that for that particular feature, is it just okay to say that this has been validated? Here is the link to the customer telling us what the problem is, right? Uh, that's my concern. Is like we're trying to say that every one of these things has to has to go through this formal. Let's go interview five customers when mm -hmm. we've got like two or three customers already saying, "Hey, no, this is a problem. You need to go fix." Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the difference, right? So you're talking about validating the maturity that's next step you already know that it's a problem you already know that i don't know 10 customers talked about the same thing you have a level a certain level of confidence on the problem and the job that we have to solve for these customers we're going to build this we're going to shift the thing then we're going to have to uh, evaluate the maturity of that feature at some oh. point for the functionality that's why these things are I all see. linked here because those are different frameworks that we use to, so the, the, there's the job to be done, there's the UX scorecard, there's the maturity scorecard. In a way, they all revolve around the, the customer problems that you already know that exist. But my point here is that it's, it's important also for us to document in a centralized place because the, the epic description is very long. And I think this is also going to be a, a good exercise for us to just have an overview here, like, okay, this is about testing yourself with your website, but it could be runner enterprise management, right? The, the, the high level mm. thing. How many jobs do we have? Like now you have like what, 10, <laughs> maybe a little bit more. I mean, I mean, just, just a starting point. Yeah, you spoke yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, so other groups, you can actually, if you just search here in, uh, in the handbook, you can see how other groups uh, they do. I'm not sure if Monitor has them, let's see. Yeah, you see, they don't have it, but they at least know what top themes that they should be looking at. Um, but anyways, we can open a, a merge request later on and we just throw them there. We continue, of course, using the Epic, but just so that we have one single source of truth as we know that uh, with the issue descriptions, <laughs> it can be a bit, uh, a bit tough to, to follow the conversation. Yeah, and I, I see what you're saying. I wonder, um... Yeah, I, I see the value probably in the handbook. I think we'll definitely iterate fast and putting it in the handbook. Mm -hmm. um, and just for now, I'll just leave, at least for this epic, I will leave it in this epic for now until we get to the point where we're yeah. all comfortable that we understand kind of yeah. how it all fits together. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. And also I think it's a good, as I was saying, it's a good exercise for me as I go and I start reading it, I can try to um, create a handbook page. And then, you know, just so that when the information is digested, there is a draft of how this page would look like. We don't have to move. By the way, the as you review this, feel free to refine my wording, right? Because I was really trying <laughs> to take the customer pain and requirements and and flip it into this job to be done frame. So if something is kind of like, oh, this could probably be filled out differently, mm -hmm. feel free to suggest something differently as well. Okay. But again, it was just my first attempt of trying to collate all of that stuff that we had around this these various topics. Okay. 
So let's let's talk again about timelines, right? So you say that uh, we do a think big this milestone, right? Uh, in the next uh, two three weeks, so we should have something that we can validate during thirteen ten. That's right. our goal, right? The admin view, yeah. Um, yeah, and for me, what I need to do is to, oh my God, this is the longest epic description ever. <laughs> No, yeah, well, I mean, th that's the one cool thing about Juan is he was very detailed, and I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah. we can we can definitely clean it up after we we all on the same page. Juan, okay. if you're watching this, <laughs> I know. Yeah, don't don't be don't be scared. Don't be scared. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, for me, I'm gonna uh, put my tasks over. That's my next uh, big item for runner. And um, as I work on my priorities for next week, I'll try to block a full day next week to look into this. So that I can digest this information, um, and before the end of this week, I have of next week, I have at least a draft or something that I can give an update. Um, um, I had to think big. Do you want me to try, like, putting together a rough vision of what I think it might look like? Okay. So, um, does we have the runner talk with the technical discussions, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that's the thing. I'm not sure if I'm. For the next one, I'm, I'm not I'm not confident that I'm gonna be you know uh, well equipped to to have that conversation. I think I'm so, not mean. Yeah. So if you if you want to have a discussion before that with the team, uh, even if I'm not there, of course, by all means, please do that. Um, so well, um, I know you. So, 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 I know you're super. So what I'll do is. Uh, take your time to digest and what have you. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I will take the heavy lifting of like getting the, the, um, the MR going to put the stuff in the jobs to be done handbook page. We don't have to worry about at least getting the first like MR on that. And I will also this week, I have site plan. I actually had site plus plan on Friday to come back to the enterprise management epic and work on other iterations. So it's already in my calendar. So I'll try to see if I can come up with some ideas for the think big, right? Like, you know, some, what this concept might look like in the future. And so at least you're not starting from scratch, like, oh my gosh, there's nothing here to work with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds good. And if you do that, please uh, ping me on, um, uh, if you're working on GitLab, of course, if you have a document, assign to me, ping, ping me so I can at least see where where the conversation is going, what's in your head. Yeah, that's pretty much uh, think that's important. Uh, but for me, it's really like about getting all this context um, that so far we do talk about it, but it's, uh, yeah. It, we know that it's on the surface. Yeah. Um, and especially if you want to simplify this, because that's the problem. If you want to simplify it, something so complex like this, then you can understand the bigger problem, problem behind it. Um, and that's why I think it's so important for me to get familiar with these statements and what are all the problems, the specific little problems that you want to solve with these proposals uh, that are already documented. Um, yeah, and, and that, so, sorry, yeah. the last thing I was going to say was um, when you have, I, I don't recall when I shared it with you, but if you have time to look at the video with Disney from over the holidays, it's, it's 45 minutes, but it really gives you a good tangible sense of one example of what's happening in the real world with customers, because mm -hmm. it has an enterprise admin person, and it has other SREs that are managing the groups and the challenges that at least one person has versus the other uh, sort of persona has with this whole thing about how you, you manage, you know, the runners in the, the way we currently have them represented in the GitLab UI. Because it's not it's not just the admin view, it's mm -hmm. the admin view, but then it's the group view and you know, all that stuff. So is this, it's on, uh, is it on YouTube? It no, it's a no. It's internally owned it because it was a chorus recording. I, I oh. think I, sh I I can't recall how I shared it with I you. I'll find the link again and put it in the agenda. Yeah, I haven't seen this around. If you can, if you can link yeah, it. Yeah, I'll find a few after this and dump it back in the agenda. I, I, I can't recall why I popped it. Oh, I know why I popped it. I put it in the runner agenda, team agenda, about two weeks back. So let me go find it there. Okay. That's where it's at. And while you're doing that, I think it will be nice for us um, because we have this one on ones on Monday, next Monday. Okay. So I want to move it to the end of the week. Is that fine? So I okay. have time to, when next time we meet, we, we discuss uh, some. Uh, um, some results. Uh,
Here is the video. I was on the 18th. One. And I won't keep you I'll, I'll look for this stuff in the agenda really fast and just tag you and I put it in here when I find it. No problem. We have. Oh, I should have it. I need to find it. Oh, I know where it is. I know where it is. Well, when you find it, um, feel free to share, share with me, um, and I'll, I'll have a look and we regroup next week. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to try to wrap up the, um, yeah, I think it is. the variable expansion. So, Let's open the chat. I responded on, yeah, I found it. There it is. Oh, it's not. Here you go. Ah. Save that. And... It's a, you know, I, I would recommend probably even looking at that before you go back and try to digest that crazy epic. Uh, the link doesn't work for me. It's like this, that. You're not for us. What? Let's see. Maybe you see. just mentioned me in the, in the thread because it's in Slack. Hmm? Yeah, let's see. Really rare. How about this link? Uh, let's, let's zoom here. Oh, I probably put the wrong. There we go. Sorry, it was a Slack. That's why I copied the Slack link. <laughs> but I didn't realize I, oh, I copied the wrong link. thing. Yeah. I copied the wrong. I copied the Slack link, not the not the video link from the Slack. Okay. I'll add here. Let me do this. Audio. I'm going to submit myself. Audio. And actually, oh, you know what? I'm so scatterbrained this morning. I actually put God, I put that link in Dovetail as well. So if you go to you know, a Dovetail project, mm -hmm. I have a, I created one for solution validation of this whole problem solution validation for this whole space. And it should be added to our agenda too. And um, it's linked in there as well, under the um, like one of the um, the data. Yep. This is also from the same uh, from the same research, from the same exactly. customer. Exactly. So right. So if you go directly into it, you'll see that I have the I already did the transcription of the notes, um, awesome. and everything. But again, if you just want to step back and look at the video first, you know what I mean, to get that mm -hmm. kind of context. So, um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, I had to hear some action items for myself as well. And before I wrap up, I kind of wanted to touch base with you on the shared OKRs for Q1. Oh, sure. Okay. Yep. For, for verify that. Da, da. Um, it's already closed. And I think, um, I'm not sure, are we all going for a UI polish? Um, um, I was confused on that because there were some. Some conversations in Slack happened yesterday and I wasn't there. Yeah, so um, I discussed this, uh, I'm gonna share my screen here so this you know where I'm looking at. So I discussed this with um, with James. Okay. And for testing, we're going with uh, with UI polish issues so mm -hmm. that we can improve the system usability score. Um, and um, are you familiar? Are you familiar with this app, with this issue? Yeah. So my question here is that we have two options and a UI polish and system speed performance. Mm -hmm. um, have you voted on this or have you? Uh, oh, yeah, we went with polish. We, polish. we, polish, that, so. we voted last week and unfortunately that's when you were out. So we <laughs> polish. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so maybe next step, do you already have like a list of uh, UI polish issues or anything that you think you want to, to prioritize? This. This, this time. Okay. Okay. This, so none of these things actually showed up on the SUS reports, very correctly, the SUS usability study. However, if we fix this, this will help with usability. Mm -hmm. And so, also, yeah, and I agree that uh, when I look at admin view, it's like, it's UI polish. It, it's it's not just polish. 
It's just missing basic table stakes 2021 functionality. I can't but, click the filter and search for things. But that's the thing, and that's the nuance. Then when you talk about um, the ability to filter or to find information easily, whatever, that's then no more UI polish. UI polish is really like this button is blue, but it should be green. Oh, that's what they're like polish? Yeah, yeah. So um, you want to get, yeah. so there's a nuance uh, between UX depth, for example. We know that our customers uh, need to filter this list, but for now, the list is static. We are delivering the feature functionality with something missing. There's a depth, a, a UX depth, but Polish is really like, we were supposed to this, uh, uh, deliver the front end to meet certain design criteria, and it didn't, but the functionality is there. I see. Um, so, I don't know if the runner, any of the runner views match the current design criteria. That's a great question. But then I think a good extra will be to just look at the current list of uh, the UX, bug, depth, polish, whatever, UX things or front end things that we have in the uh, already logged or existing issues and just try to connect those hopefully with the enterprise management or with the admin view. I'm certain that we can make some minor improvements right. um, and find things in the, in the backlog. That is super so, fun. I'll look at this again. Yeah, so um, let me go quickly here to the issues. And, and you're looking at the issues that are linked from um, the OKR, right? Uh, let me see, can I just close the, the OKR page? The ones that are related to, to it? What do you mean? Sorry. I said, no, you said you were looking at issues. I was asking, if, are you looking at issues that will link to the OKR? Um, oh, yes. Yeah, that okay. we can potentially link to, to this OKR. So if I do runner and... Um, Category runner or group runner? I think group, right? It's fine, yeah. Be a group. <laughs> um, but then why do we have a category of runner? Is it a group and a category? That's an interesting point. I am not about that. <laughs> it's a, those are the, the labels that we have. Now, that's what I'm doing, just so you know. Uh, I'm doing here. This one. I'm just screen again. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, it lives so slow. Okay. Go. Okay. Yeah, we have things. So. Yeah. This is not your polish. This is not your polish. This is like. Yeah, that's a state, that, right? Yeah. It's not accessible. Uh, so. Um, I see your point. I'm going to do that today because I did this for testing as well. So it's fresh in my, my mind. So I'm going to look at the, what we have today for UI Polish, look at oh, what we have today for enterprise management. And then because I'm familiar with this terminology, with the nuance between Polish or feature, or whatever, I'll try to come up with a, a list for you and then I'll share in Slack um, so that we can uh, just be aligned on what are the items. Um, that fit the, the shared OKR. I guess it makes sense. Now, now I, remember when, uh, I, I do remember when we had done this exercise before and I looked at that list, except for the one or two like missing features, I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And I wasn't really as worried about it because I was just like, okay, tweak here, tweak there, but okay. Now, I, now I'm with you, I'm currently caught up. <laughs> okay, so I'm going the UI polish and share. Okay. Awesome. I'll try to do that today. Um, if I don't, tomorrow. At least tomorrow. So. Well, you know, I gotta That's run. I have another call. And I need to prepare. Okay. Oh <laughs> Thank you. So I started to go over high and, and give no, you a, just a total long brain dump. <laughs> uh, we always have uh, things to talk about, so that's good. <laughs> and like we're both like, you know. Anyways. Um, glad you're back and glad you're well. So see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. See you. Bye.